So guys, today we're going to be talking about psychology, specifically about how beliefs will be guiding your life. Now, I've gone through many different cycles of understanding how to change beliefs and understanding how they intertwine between one another. But at the most simple level, I've distilled it down to one simple process. Now, we are going to start with this process and then we're going to zoom out a little bit and look at some finer details and uh, and break those down. So the first thing that we need to understand is, OK, well, how do does a typical belief form? Well, we have the belief which will represent with a B. Now, based on that belief, that is going to dictate the amount slash the quality of the action that you take. Now, based on the actions that you take and the consistency of those actions, that is going to determine the results that you get. Now, here is where we reach a weird intermediary stage. OK, so technically we go back up to belief, but in the middle we have this little thing right here. Now, this little part right here is perception. And this is really going to be at the heart of when we understand it in the context of trading performance and how we can actually improve our own trading. This is going to be extremely important. So in order to truly understand this, though, let's first of all go through with an example um, and then we will relate it back to trading. So let's just say that the belief was I am really bad at sport. So let's just say that we are we'll just do a little stick man running for now like so. And yes, I know, medal for drawing incredibly well. Um, but let's just say that we have a belief that we're really bad at sport. Okay, so we think that we are terrible. Based on that belief, whenever we try a sport, we are going to probably give up very, very soon. We're probably not going to give that much effort to it. And the result is, is that just like our belief was, we are going to have most likely, I don't really know how to represent this as to an X, Based on those actions, because we're probably going to give up soon, probably it's because it's not going to work out as much as we thought, it's not going to be great. Um, the result we're going to get is we are probably going to put in a really poor performance. Now, our perception naturally of that poor performance is going to be negative. Another X there. Incredible work for creativity from me. And then because we see that as negative, we're going to say, ah, see, I told you I was bad at sport. In other words, the original belief self-reinforces itself. And so what will normally happen with people is they will either be on this cycle where they are spiraling up like this, or they'll be on a cycle where they're spiraling down like this. And this, we have these different kind of coils and magnifiers in different areas of our lives. Some of us have positive reinforcement cycles, which is this move upwards here um, for maybe something like health, maybe that we've got that, you know, really down in our lives. But when it comes to finance, maybe we've got that spiraling down. And so it's not about being perfect. It's about managing these cycles in the best way possible. Um, but yeah, we all have different levels of all of these. So the next question is, okay, well, that's great, but how does it relate to trading? Well, there's a few key elements here that are very, very important. I think that in the habit forming space, in the belief space, you know, there's a lot of people that get way too woo woo about it. They're like, oh, you know, you know, changing your beliefs, you know, just sit and meditate and really think on it and, you know, say affirmations. I'm not a fan of that at all. Um, I really just don't think that there's any real science that supports that to a significant degree uh, in the way that most people do it. Um, but what instead I think is key is starting with the action. Because if you can change the action that you make, then that will give you a different result than the one that your belief aligns with, which means that if you perceive it correctly, and we'll go on to perception in a moment, that means that we will be able to change our initial belief without even needing to necessarily look at it. So by changing the action, we get a different result. By getting a different result, we can begin to change our perception if done correctly, which can give us a different belief, which then if we have a different belief, this action gets easier and easier and easier. It's why, you know, when you first start a habit, often it's going to be very, very difficult. But as you do it more and more, as you get better and better at it, as you start getting results from it, that action becomes easier and easier and you start to actually enjoy the action. The easiest example is, you know, if I wanted to start learning the piano, then uh, at first it's going to be really difficult. It's going to be really painful. But as I get better at it, as I start overcoming more of, a, of those obstacles, getting more results, in other words, my outcome is that I'm going to start believing that I'm better at the piano. I'm going to start putting more effort in and it's going to feel better. It's going to feel easier until the point where I love playing the piano and that's great. And so in short, we're going to have to face one thing in the short term, right, which is pain. 
It doesn't matter what your belief that you're trying to change is, whether you're trying to, you know, make it more conducive to trading, whether you're trying to hold trades longer, whether you're trying to stop over trading, whether you're doing something strategic where you're not trying to change the strategy every five minutes. It always comes down to an initial period where we need to face pain. Very important. Now, the second part of this is going to be even more critical, because if you get this part wrong, you will fail. Now, what is that? Well, perception. Perception. What is perception? Perception is how we perceive a thing in our environment. So a result in this case. Now, with trading, most people make the fatal flaw with perception. And this is a huge mistake. They will ask the question of, am I profitable yet? And this will be their guiding light. If they are profitable, they'll be happy. If they're not, they will be sad. And the reason that this is so hurtful in the context of trading is because profitability isn't just made up of one thing. It is the result of lots and lots of tiny things working together in harmony. And so when we look at the idea of profitability, what we're really looking at is a unit, a collection of things that are working together nicely. And so if I judge myself based on whether I'm profitable, I run into the big issue of a um, disconnected feedback loop. Now, what the hell does this mean? Well, this is very simple, right? So if we imagine that somebody has done everything right, you know, they've followed their plan, their plan has been tested, they do everything right for the course of the week. So we'll give them three tick marks to show them how incredibly smart they are, right? They can get to the end of that week and they can have a losing week in terms of profitability. And so if you're judging yourself based on, am I profitable yet? Then you're going to look at all of those actions that you took for that week. And you're going to say, ah, oh, well, it didn't work. So maybe these actions are wrong. And this is the wrong conclusion because you can do everything right in trading and get a bad outcome. Or the other scenario, which is you do everything wrong for that week. You're changing your plan every five minutes. Hey, maybe you're even just entering randomly, whatever you're doing, you can come out with a profitable week. And so this is really why saying, am I profitable yet, is the worst measuring stick for determining whether you're doing badly or well, because the feedback loop in trading is disconnected. Now, the reason that it's disconnected is because of one element, and that element is time. Now, how could time be an element here? Well, because when we look, in fact, let's just do this up here. In trading, the short term is going to be random. Now, this is if you're doing everything right, uh, correctly, but uh, the results that we get are going to be are random over the short term, but predictable over the long term. This is the fundamental premise of having probabilities as part of uh, how trading works, right? Our results are random over the short term. We don't know what the outcome is going to be. And what most people are doing is they're judging how well they're doing based on the last week, or maybe even the last day, or maybe even the last two weeks of performance and asking themselves, am I profitable yet? And if they're not, they switch up, they change strategy, they change something about their process and normally lots about their process. The problem with this is that the feedback loop is disconnected. And this is the addition that I want to add to this in the short term, not in the long term, in the short term. And most of us are wired to interpret our world through the short term. We're not wired to think long term. It's much harder to do that. Whereas if we understand that our results are predictable over the long term, assuming we've done our homework and done all the other things that I talk about in this channel so uh, so much, but assuming we've done all those things well, time is going to be the thing that gives us a proper feedback loop. Because in order for us to properly learn, we need a proper feedback loop. The easiest example is if you're a child and you go to a boiling hot oven and you touch that oven with your hand. And yes, this is going to be my, okay, that's terrible. I mean, that, <laughs> that's supposed to be a hand. Imagine this is your hand, the monster hand, whatever. Touch this stove, or touch this oven, and it's boiling hot. You immediately snap your hand back, and you're like, "Oh my god, that's hot! I'm I'm not going to touch that again." That is a normal feedback loop. You touch something that's bad, you get a bad reaction, i.e., pain, and then you move your hand away, and you're like, oh, "Okay, I'm not going to do that again." But with trading, if we never learn to create this direct feedback loop, we're going to run into issues. What most people, what happens most of the time with trading is you'll touch the oven, it will be boiling hot, but you won't feel any pain. And so you'll keep your hand there and then you'll move it away at the wrong moment and then add it back. And by the time you finish, your hand is all burnt. Probably does look a little bit like this hand by the time you're done, right? 
Whereas the way that we get a normal feedback loop is we wait, we create distance, we wait before making those decisions. We are slower with what we change in our own process. Now, why is this so difficult? Because it is both boring and painful. No one wants to wait and no one wants to sit in pain, but this is the reality, guys. In order to have a clear feedback loop, we need to understand, okay, well, I may not know after a week, depending on how many trades I get with my system, depending on the risk reward of my system, that's going to mainly determine the win rate, which is going to influence how many trades I need. Now, just as a little insight, okay, the higher the risk reward is, obviously that means the lower the win rate is, but more importantly, the lower the win rate is, that will dictate the amount of randomness that you experience in the short term. This is something that I don't hear many people talking about. What this means is it means that if I've got a really high win rate system, let's say 80%, that means that my, my likelihood of seeing consecutive losses in a row goes down significantly. That means that if I take uh, 20 trades of my system, I'm going to have a much better idea of how my system is performing than if I have a one to 10 risk reward with a you know a, an 11% win rate or 12% win rate, because then it's so likely that I see multiple losers in a row that 20 trades probably isn't going to be enough. But I'm probably going to need more 50, 60, 70, 80 before making a decision. And so this is going to be the first step to understanding, okay, well, how much of that time element do I need in order to understand my feedback loop? Now, of course, the second element is you also need to understand um, what type of system you've got and the types of trades that you take. That's also going to influence um, when you change a system, when you don't change a system. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so let's just say that you have a system that has about a 75% win rate, okay, or a 70% win rate, maybe. Now, with that sort of a system, what you're really going to be looking for is, and of course, this depends on person to person, but about 20 trades, 25 trades is going to be okay. If you judge yourself too soon before that point, it's not even going to work. And even if you get to the end of that phase and you're still judging yourself and am I profitable yet, it's probably going to be too soon, especially if you're someone that's never been consistent. Because in the beginning, there are so many things that you can do wrong. If we look under the hood of profitability, okay, let's look at every... I mean, we'll just name a few because there's almost infinite things. Um, holding trades to target. No revenge trading. Over trading. Tested strategy. Maybe even some diversification in there as well between pairs. Exposure. Slash over leverage, over leveraging. Um, I mean, the list, guys, is almost endless. Just imagine that this list extends out to about 100 points. If one of these things isn't working, and it doesn't necessarily mean you need, need every single one because each system has different, you know, excessive weak spots and stuff that you need to cover for. But let's just say that you were doing, you were trying to solve these problems here, okay? And you tried all of the right things, okay? You did everything right. You fixed these problems for three weeks. But you look at the performance of your system during that time, and it's still not performing very well. If you were judging yourself based on profitability, what are you going to do? You're going to throw these out. This is a huge mistake because you were doing things right to things that contributed to profitability. But profitability is technically out of your control in the short to medium term. Now, this means that the solution is to change the measuring stick. And this is really bring it back to what we said about perception. This is it in one sentence, all we really need to know. We measure the metric related to the problem we are trying to solve, specifically the one that is in our control. This is the key thing, guys. I'm also just going to say, because it can be metrics and it can be uh, ones. It doesn't necessarily just have to be one thing. Um, but what I mean by this is, you know, if I'm trying to hold my trades to target more, then this means that I'm not going to be measuring, am I profitable yet to determine if I've fixed that problem? That's really, really the wrong approach. Instead, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a metric such as um, what percentage of trades did I hold to target? And then as well as that, understanding, okay, well, do I have enough trades to make that percentage worthwhile? And I'll give you an example of that. Okay, if I'm trying to measure what percentage of trades I held to target, and I'm like, oh, I held 100% this week. 
that sounds great. But then if we look at how many trades you took and it's one trade, that's not really that impressive. Whereas if we took 10, if we took 20, that's going to be a more significant percentage um, that's going to give us a better idea of whether we've actually solved that problem or not. And again, this is why time is so important. Time, it's understanding what you're measuring. We are measuring something that we can control. I can't control whether I'm going to be profitable next week, two weeks, three weeks from now, even if I do everything right. So instead, I'm going to focus on the smaller, lower level metrics, such as percentage of trades that I've held to target. And I'm going to be able to track that and monitor that uh, and try and come up with a systemized solution to the problem okay um and so guys really it comes down to this we need to face short-term pain whenever we make a new decision whenever we change something and that comes with starting with changing our actions um and then the next part of that is going to be the discipline that comes with that but also changing the perception how do we measure our results because where how we measure our results is going to determine really how we perceive them and how we perceive them is going to be the main factor that is going to come back and influence that original belief that we have, which is going to make the action easier, which is going to make the result easier, which is going to make the perception easier, which is going to reinforce the same belief. What happens is exactly what we see in this diagram here. It starts off with these long loops, but over time, as each loop goes, it gets shorter and shorter, tighter and tighter, easier and easier, quicker and quicker. It doesn't necessarily mean the problems are getting easier, but it means that our momentum is increasing. And therefore, it feels less burdensome going along the journey. I'm sure you've seen many people online who talk about you know, various uh, improvements that they're making in their lives. And the further they go on, it gets easier to face those challenges. Even if the challenges are getting more difficult, the momentum is there to support them through that difficulty. Um, and so, yeah, so I really hope that this video has helped you guys in some way. Um, I... Look forward to seeing you in the next video if you'd like more help with any of these things or to see our step-by-step -step systematic system as well as all the psychological um, systems and processes that are so integral to trading. Then I'd recommend checking out the links in the description box below. If not, um, there are some great resources on my channel and other channels. I'll try and leave some of those below as well. Um, the psychology playlist, if you enjoy stuff like this in particular, is also a, a good watch. But uh, guys, I hope you've had an amazing time here uh, if you've got any content ideas let me know down below and uh yeah i'll see you in the next one guys take care all the best